Let me recognize Congressman Emilio Lenardia from the Lone District of Bacolod City for his uh, privileged speech. The gentleman from the Lone District of Bacolod City has the floor. Thank I you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May we know may what is the pleasure of the gentleman? Uh, may I rise on a matter of personal and collective privilege? Please state the subject. This is about airport security, which uh, affects the public the in general, gen but also affects the congressman in particular, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman has 10 minutes. Thank you. Every week, more than half of the members of this August body are exposed to a danger that perhaps most of us are not aware of, but which has been proven to exist by an unfortunate family from my district. I refer to the danger of undefined security parameters in our airports, particularly at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3, which was put into sharp focus by the sad experience of a family from Bacolod City who came to Manila for a Christmas vacation in 2013 that ended in tragedy. Members of the Oi family were not able to celebrate Christmas in the big city as they had looked forward to. In fact, one of them did not get out of the airport alive. Three of them bore injuries that exact their tool on their bodies until now. And all of them traumatized by the experience none of them had any relation to nor responsibility over. It was a simple case of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. From their flight from Bacolod, they had come out of the airport at Bay 12, eager and excited for the Christmas holidays before them. Unfortunately, they had to walk to Bay 1, where they were supposed to be picked up by a relative. There in Bay 1, they were caught in a shooting spree from an unknown gunman. They took bullets that were not supposedly for them. Phil Thomas Estuesta, one and a half years old at the time, died on the spot, some of his brains spilling out in the concrete. His cousin, Diane Philip Oy, who was three years old at the time, was injured in the head, the bullet piercing her scalp. Their elders, Amalia Lirasan and Marie Ann Lirasan, suffered physical injuries and still unknown emotional and maybe even psychological injuries from the incident. Phil Thomas has been laid to rest. The young Philip now goes to school, the hole in her head still there. Amalia continues to feel the pain in her left stomach where the bullet had passed. Marie Ann still cannot use her left arm which had also taken a bullet. My fellow members of Congress, except for the immediate emergency needs, this family has not received assistance for the injuries and horrors they went through. Elsewhere in the world, the management of the airport would have assumed responsibility for what was an unmistakable lapse in the security of the airport terminal area. Yet no one seems to take responsibility here. Allegedly, not the airport management because the incident happened outside of the airport, although on the waiting area involving people who had just used the airport. Let me put it in another way. Bay 1, which is a few steps away from the airport doors, is not part of the airport, so they say. Granting for the sake of argument that this was no longer the jurisdiction of the airport management, no one can also tell if there were regular police personnel patrolling the area. You see, Mr. Speaker, the CCTV cameras which were supposed to record the incidents there happened not to be functioning at that crucial time when the bullets flew and hit the unwitting holiday revelers from my city. Most appalling here is the conclusion of the government service insurance system, the insurer of the airport, that it cannot pay for any liabilities arising from this tragedy because it said the security measures taken by the airport management were enough. How it came to this conclusion in the face of, the, of dead and broken bodies is beyond me. 
If the security measures were enough, would a gunman even have penetrated the area and started shooting people? No one seems responsible here. No one seems responsible for the safety of thousands of people who pass here every day, including almost half of us. Congressmen who go home to our districts every week and come back here for our work. As the victims relate it, the airport was horribly unprepared for the incident. There was no first aid measure at all. Not even an ambulance to carry the victims to the hospital. There was even no traffic enforcer to manage the horrified traffic flow immediately after the incident. One of the members of the family of the victims had to get out of his car to direct traffic so the victims can be ferried out of the scene in a private van driven by a good Samaritan who remains unknown up to this day. For sure, it can be said, it was an accident. And for sure, no one knows when will a similar incident happen again. But that is no excuse for ignoring this danger. That is no excuse for leaving the Oi family to their own meager resources to survive this tragedy they had nothing to do with. It is ironic that while we require air carriers to exercise extraordinary diligence in the conduct of its business, such that even the faintest suspicion of malfunction grounds airplanes right away, the same does not seem to apply to airports, seaports, and even bus and train terminals. Yet, travel necessarily involves airports and these terminals. Certainly, we cannot go from one destination to another without passing them. The experience of my constituents tell us that we cannot simply just have safe airports. We must also have not safe airports as, as well. How ironic that after going through rigorous security checks, when they board and disembark, after going through X-ray inspections and physical checks, passengers a few steps away would die from bullets not intended for them. And then there is also the question as to where does airport start and end? Where does our responsibility for public safety start and end where airports, seaports, train and bus terminals are concerned? At what point are our security forces responsible? Mr. Speaker, I urge for, I strongly urge for a review of the security measures in our airports and other terminals, especially on the parameters with which these measures operate. I strongly urge a review of the division of responsibilities of all the security forces that operate within these terminals and around them to see who takes care of what. I urge that a thorough review of the GSI's insurance coverage on our airports and terminals catering to public commuters be conducted. A re-evaluation is necessary considering that these terminals nowadays are used by thousands as travel has become so accessible and affordable to our people. We cannot and we should not allow that our traveling public will have nothing to turn to if a similar incident happens. Lastly, I urge our Department of Social Welfare and De Development to take a close look at the case of the Oi family who is suffering now from an incident that was exacerbated by yet another gray area, an unprecedented problem that no law seems fit to solve. Maybe our DSWD has not had a disaster like this but one family is suffering from its effects and need all the help it can get. At the time of the tragedy, the father of the victim, Villamor Estuesta, was in Canada, a few months away from his immigration papers. He had to get out of Canada to come home to bury his son, which, by the way, was the first and the last time he ever saw him. He ever saw him. Sadly, in fact, he has, never seen, he has never seen his son alive since birth. No one knows exactly what the pain in Amalia's stomach is. 
He has not gone to a doctor for a checkup for two years. Diane has also not gone to a doctor for over a year, and she has to live with that hole in her head that makes her vulnerable to infections and other complications. No one knows the psychological impact of this tragedy on this girl. Now she proclaims she will never go back to Manila again because according to her, people kill people there. My fellow members of Congress, this exposes a gray area that call on us to act. There's a need for a special law to, for public commuter terminals to exercise extraordinary diligence for the safety and protection of the traveling public similar to laws governing common carriers. In other words, we should demand the same extraordinary diligence we require of airlines to cover airports as well. All this while, the oil family has borne this grief quietly, and so did my district, until I learned this year that the family could not even afford a medical checkup now to check on the continuing effects of the tragedy that happened on government property under government watch. And so, I stand before you, my fellow members of Congress, not only to call for help for this family, not only to call out this danger that lurks for millions of travelers every day, but also to invite you to do what we can do to avoid a similar tragedy that can happen in any terminal in any part of the Philippines. Let this grief end with us in my district by making sure it does not happen to anyone else. Yes, let us make sure it does not happen to anyone else ever again. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well taken. Gentlemen from the Lone District of Bacolod City, the Honorable Junalita. The Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of Congressman Leonard Dia to the Committee on Rules. Any objection to the motion? The Chair hears none. Motion is approved.